Okay, so I think you're probably going to get a big kick out of this. We're talking today about TVA Sports and a segment that they had on the recent episode of the JIC show. Now, before we go over and read the article and look at the idea that is brought up, I wanted to say a few things opening up this video, you know? TVA Sports has sort of a reputation, especially for folks who consume Montreal Canadiens-based journalism, media, articles, etc., etc., right? We can all acknowledge there's a certain sense of place that TVA Sports has in the journalism world, and when it comes to the reputation they have, you can see it talked about very much in the comments section of my videos, a lot of people discuss this stuff elsewhere on social media, Twitter, Reddit, etc., that TVA Sports has more of a clickbaity, sensationalized take on the Montreal Canadiens news world, at least that's what I seem to feel is the general consensus amongst Canadians' fans. And that's not a bad thing, you know? Like, I clickbait all the time on my YouTube channel. I definitely understand the name of the game here. But this idea that was brought on TVA Sports was so interesting, and it was interesting in all the wrong ways, that I saw this article and I was like, dude, I have to make a video about that. That is so ridiculous and so funny in a way, too, that I think the YouTube audience will get a pretty big kick out of this conversation. So today we are talking about Montreal Canadiens goaltender Jake Allen and giving a little bit of an update as to his potential trade situation because... Long story short, at the time of me recording this audio, he is still a hab. He has not gotten traded, and if that changes between the time I finish recording this audio and the time the video becomes public on YouTube, then hey, I apologize. We'll make a correctional video like we did with the Sean Monaghan stuff. But when it comes to Jake Allen, everything that we have known about him is still the same. 33 years old, 6'2", 198, left-handed catch and goaltender, signed to the end of next season, making $3.85 million a year, and his season with the Canadians this year has dropped off to an 895 save percentage in 18 games played. He also has a 363 goals against average and a 510 3 record. He hasn't been great this season, statistically speaking, but when it comes to the Canadians and their goaltending situation, there was always sort of a juggling act going on. Jake Allen, Montembeau, Primo, three guys suiting up here for varying amounts of games. They've all split the load fairly equally, you could say, at this point in the year. And I think it's clear to see now that Sammy Montembeau is the number one. But for Jake Allen in particular, he's been the guy that was tossed in all the trade rumors throughout this season pretty much since day one. Everybody was saying, oh yeah, if the Canadians wanted to go forward with younger guys, then Jake Allen would be the odd man out. But keeping Jake Allen around would still be all right because he's an older veteran presence and he's had this experience. You know, he's got a Stanley Cup to his name and he knows what it's like to be second fiddle. His Stanley Cup championship run saw him play in the backup role to Jordan Binnington. When the Canadians went to the final in 2021, he was back up to Carey Price. So Jake Allen, despite the fact that he is sort of in a position where he's been kind of one-upped in each of the most important moments of his career, he's still a good sport about it. And for the Canadians, you could very well say that his leadership, veteran experience, and mentorship is also valuable. Much more valuable, you could debate, than the actual on-ice product he provides. This idea was expanded upon even further after Jake Allen's most recent game, a 7-2 loss against the St. Louis Blues, wherein he played the full 60 minutes, and of course that means that he let in all of those 7 goals. He did so on 36 shots against, so his save percentage was an 806 on the night. That's honestly kind of crazy to me, because having 29 saves in a game is normally considered, like, good. I think in most circumstances, making 29 stops in a game would usually spell out a good result, even at the very least, like an 890-plus save percentage. But no, he let in 7 goals. So, pretty bad, definitely not the goaltending performance you want to see. But if we head over to the folks on TVA Sports, let's take a look at this article published earlier yesterday saying that Jake Allen, quote, doesn't want to be traded. Let's read the piece together. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, it's translated from French into English, so follow along here if you can. Jake Allen's poor performance on Sunday versus the Blues makes the goaltender less attractive to other teams, according to Tony Marinero and Jean-Charles Lajoie. 
During the Coliseum segment on Monday at the JIC show, the two men did not mince their words towards the veteran goaltender Jake Allen. Take a look at what Marinaro said. Jake Allen on Sunday afternoon was terrible. He's having the worst season of his career at the worst time for the Habs. His number of goals allowed per game, 363, is the worst of his career. He's having a horrible season at a time when the Canadians would like to trade him. And according to John Charles Lajoie, if the fans are disappointed with Jake Allen's performance, it's the opposite for Allen himself. Let's tell it like it is. It works for him at the moment. He guards the bases like a guy who doesn't want to be traded. He doesn't want to leave Montreal. He's stationed here. He was likely offered a role in the organization at the end of his career. The Habs love him. You have to hear Marty St. Louis and Hughes talk about Jake Allen. They love him, JIC explained. And in the video segment included in this article, they essentially say the same thing. So what exactly is their argument here? What are they proposing is the status quo of this Jake Allen situation? Well, if you try to read between the lines here and really think about what these words mean, essentially what Marinaro and JIC are talking about, what they're insinuating here is that Jake Allen, in their minds, likes being a Canadian so much that his poor performance in games like the one against St. Louis where he let in seven goals on 36 shots against, and like some of the other games he had had, let's say 6-1 loss against Buffalo, 8-6-5 save percentage there, 5-4 overtime loss against the Red Wings, 8-4-8 eight, eight save percentage there, they're arguing that bad games like this are good for Jake Allen because he does not want to get traded and therefore would be okay with tanking his value. In a way, they're insinuating that Jake Allen is tanking himself so that he can stay in Montreal and not get moved. They're saying it straight up on the broadcast at the beginning. Yeah, bad games like this, they're going to make his numbers worse and they're going to make him less attractive to other teams that are looking for an extra goaltender. The Habs have had this problem the whole year, cycling around with three names. And eventually, we learned from Kent Hughes' perspective that they wouldn't really force themselves to trade Allen. They wouldn't do it for scraps. They just wanted to get a deal done that they actually thought was valuable. But now, Jake Allen, in literally the worst statistical season he's ever had in the NHL, his value has been getting lower, potentially to the dismay of the Canadians who are trying to trade him away, but to the pleasure of him and his family. And that's the entire idea that they're talking about on JIC and TVA Sports, which is why I thought it'd be hilarious to go out there and address this. You know what? We talk about teams tanking all the time, and that's part of the thing that comes into the conversation when you discuss tanking, quote-unquote. You can never tell players to tank. You can never force your players to tank. You'll never have a group of guys in a hockey team at the NHL level go out there and throw games. Nobody holds themselves back and says, okay, I'm just going to make this dumb pass up the middle so we can lose this game and we can not get any points. Like, nobody does that. But tanking from an organizational standpoint is usually depicted by the GM's moves. He'll put his team in a position where the likelihood of them winning more games is lessened by making trades for worse players, by trading away good players and getting prospects, literally making the on-ice NHL product worse by removing talent. Or they'll sign contracts or get bigger deals for guys that are dead money, etc., etc. That's tanking. It's putting your team in a worse spot. You're not going to tank by actually telling the players to play worse, and I feel like the same thing could be said is happening here. I don't necessarily feel like Jake Allen is playing worse on purpose, but they are saying that with this territory of him playing worse, it makes things easier for him because the likelihood of him getting traded is now lessened. So it's a very strange idea, one that's kind of convoluted around and around. I'll admit I like making Jake Allen videos because I like having the opportunity to see what new Goldie masks he's wearing and make new PNG files of that so I could put it in the thumbnail. It's just super nice being able to work with colorful material like that. But if you're a Canadians fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the notion that Jake Allen could potentially be tanking his own trade value by giving us games like the one against the St. Louis Blues? 7-2 loss, sub-850 save percentage, disaster season so far when it comes to his on-ice statistics. How do you feel like this is going to impact his trade conversations? And do you think the Canadians really care? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rose 99. And...
Bye.